We begin with an exclusive report on torture training in Iraq. Horrific pictures discovered showing gruesome methods of torture. We have to warn you, these images you're about to see are extremely disturbing. Let's go to CNN's Brian Todd. He's joining us now. Brian, where were these pictures found? Wolf, they were found in an al-Qaeda safe house during recent raids in and around Baghdad. U.S. military officials say these images that they just declassified show the true nature of what the Iraqi people are facing, and they reinforce in the minds of American military commanders why U.S. forces are there. Torture at the hands of al-Qaeda. Victims suspended upside down and whipped, drilled through the hand, suspended from a ceiling and electrocuted. U.S. military officials say these cartoons are part of an al-Qaeda training manual, complete with how to use a blowtorch on a victim's body. These drawings, given to CNN by the U.S. military in Iraq, were found on a computer captured during recent raids of al-Qaeda safe houses. They've made it in a cartoon manner so that no matter what your literacy rate or what nationality you are, all you've got to do is look at this picture to understand how to conduct tortures of innocent people. Methods like taking a hot iron to the skin and others too grotesque to show. This is the nature of the enemy that the Iraqi people are facing here in Iraq. U.S. military officials say information from this raid led them to other safe houses where they freed dozens of Iraqi kidnap victims. Yep. Which included a 13-year-old boy that literally had been tortured, electrocuted, whipped, beat uh, by these al-Qaeda terrorists. Pictures of scars on those victims tell only part of the story. General William Caldwell says the boy suffered more gruesome injuries. We asked General Caldwell, is this being done by Sunni al-Qaeda fighters against local Shias? This was Sunnis conducting it on Sunnis themselves, uh, where they had uh, brought in some of the population from that area. Why? Kelly McCann of Kroll Security Group, a former U.S. Special Forces officer, says it's mostly a matter of intimidation. I think that people are, are afraid of physical pain to that degree. They're afraid of this being done to their husband, their uncle, their grandfather, their child. So yeah, not only to extract information, but also to compel a local population to at least not help U.S. forces. General Caldwell says al-Qaeda typically, typically sends that message with the kidnapped victims back to their families. He says some of the people that they freed told them they expected to be ransomed off back to their families. Wolf. You've been speaking, Brian, uh, with U.S. officials and other experts. What do they say to this question? Are these torture methods unique to al-Qaeda? U.S. officials are being very cautious about that, saying only that they got them from an al-Qaeda safe house. They're going to try to give us more information on that in the coming days. Kelly McCann says, however, that he recognizes some of those techniques from Saddam Hussein's Ba'athist regime, other techniques from as far back as the Vietnam era, so there could be maybe some borrowing going on. Brian Todd with some exclusive reporting for us. Brian, a horrific story, but important. Thank you. Uh, meanwhile, the U.S. military 